Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest.
Sana yetu se wahiti.
Please be seated in the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Give it all to you. I give it all. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you please just step out of your seat? Welcome to all three people to this first Sunday of the month of April. Can you just step out? Greet somebody. Add a smile to it. Do it joyfully. Nobody may have given them a smile this morning. Your smile can change their day. Your smile can change their environment. Your smile can create an atmosphere for them. Hallelujah. Well, on behalf of His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, the father of the house, will welcome each and every one of us to this morning's special service. Amen. Hallelujah. For those of you joining us online, wherever you are connecting from, you are equally welcome. Those joining us on Dominion Television, across the nations of the world, you are equally welcome. Put your hands together and give God praise. This is the day the Lord our God has made, that you and I may rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Anything designed to take away your joy today, let it be silenced. Anything designed to quench your ability to be glad, let it be taken out of the way. In the name of Jesus, say, oh God, let your perfect will for my life this day come into manifestation without fail. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands for one minute. Pray for the manifestation of God's will for your life this day. God has good plans for you. He has great things in store for you. May nothing deny you. May nothing rob you of the purpose and the plan and the good will of God for this day. The day is loaded with the miracles and blessings of Almighty God. May nothing sabotage your blessing. May nothing deny you of your portion of the blessing of Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Kudabawatasaya. Say in the name of Jesus. We command our heavens open in the name of Jesus. We command the heavens open and we silence every contrary voice. Say we quench every strange fire. Say we mute every voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And say by the power of the name of Jesus, we override and overturn every witchcraft activity in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, clap your hand, overturn and override every witchcraft activity whatever the enemy is doing in the shadows to interfere with your miracle with God's plan for this service let it be overturned let it be overridden let every strange fire be quenched and let the glory of our God be revealed Kowanaman Tassaya Miriam Terene Mekadua Kassaya Mikayandi Beri Inawatakaya Rapari Anasei May the power of God be present in our midst May the glory of our God be revealed in our gathering and may the goodness of the Lord be made manifest in all that we do this day in the name of Jesus the Christ the Son of the living God Amen Hallelujah Tell somebody I see a miracle with your name on it. I say, I pray for you that you will not miss it. Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Are you ready? This morning we have back in the house a man of great depth, a teacher par excellence, as I like to describe him, a man with a great depth of knowledge, with an apostolic mantle, 
a man with prophetic insight, a writer, a teacher, is the founder and the general overseer of the Cornerstone Churches worldwide with over 300 churches under his supervision. And yet, with all that great responsibility, out of love for his friend, our father, the Archbishop, he has chosen to spend all this time with us, all this Easter period with us. It's been such a tremendous blessing. Anytime we hear him, it's fresh, freshness, freshness, and freshness. This morning, we have in the back in the house, the servant of God, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let's receive the ministry of Bishop Michael Pitts. God bless you. God bless you. Thank the Lord. So glad. So glad to be with you. And, and thank you for just standing with me here for just a few moments today. I'm going to read a scripture to you. But I believe that today is going to be a day when some things are going to change in your favor. That's what I believe. I was speaking I'll with, with Papa, Papa, and he said and to he make, said sure to make sure, that sure that I send his send love his and put big arms big around arms everyone. everyone. It's, a big, it's a big hug in here today from Papa. Papa. And, uh, he... and I'm so glad to be standing here because I understand that we are standing in unique moments in the world. And we are also standing in a unique space. I'm standing in a space that I recognize I would not be in had Papa not said yes years ago when he said yes to God made the opportunity for me to stand into this space. And I want to say to you that had you not said yes and joined your heart with Papa's heart and the, and the vision of God, had you not done that, we would not be standing here today. So clap for each other because everyone is a part of the family here. I just want to do maybe one thing here before, before I read you this scripture. Let's join hands all across. Because to me, when we join hands, it's, a, it's like a symbol of us joining hearts and joining faith, joining our lives. And it seemed like a few years ago during pandemic, we got used to not touching each other. <laughs> and we got used to staying away from each other. Jesus said, you, have to, you should touch and agree. Not just agree, and not just touch. Touch and agree. Just squeeze that hand on the left. Not too hard, not too hard, just squeeze it. Don't push their rings into their fingers. Squeeze the hand on the right and the left. I want you to know what a miracle feels like. That the person whose hands that you are holding is a miracle in motion. Whew. They are not what they are going to be, but they're not what they used to be. They are on their way there. God, if you bless the person on my left, if you bless the person on my right, I'm going to praise you today like that blessing was my very own. Bless those watching us now online. Bless those from wherever they may be. Bless those who hear these words. May your blessings be upon your people. Everyone, just put your hands straight up in the air right there. Put your hands straight up in the air just for one minute. You are holy, holy. Are you Lord God? Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. 
Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. I'm reading to you out of Matthew chapter 16 just for, just for a short period of time. And what I don't finish with you today, I'm going to continue on Wednesday. And in the first service this morning, it was as the Spirit of God began to touch people's hearts and minds. But I have a unique feeling that this is the service that everybody should be in because something big is getting ready to happen. I just want to say that. I just want to say that out loud. I said something big is getting ready to happen right here for all of you. And I'm reading out of Matthew chapter 16. I want to begin at verse 13. And these are familiar portions of Scripture, I believe, to you. It says, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples this question, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elias, some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Thank the Lord and amen. You may be seated, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. How many are ready today? If you're ready, say yes. I need, I need to find a little bit more strength, all right? I just want to know again. If you're ready, say yes. yes. I say that because I think that it's important that we bring a certain something to the table in the days that we are in, a certain energy and a certain strength, because it seems to me that wherever you look in the world, that the world seems like it's on fire. It seems like the world has lost its bearings, like the world has lost its mind. I don't know if you have noticed it, but it's wherever you look, it seems like the world is in crisis. The world, it seems like it's in crisis. If you look into the Middle East, then you see that the world is in crisis. If we look to, to Russia and Ukraine, we see that that part of the world is in crisis. Beginning with the Arab Spring just a few years ago, set another part of Europe into crisis. I come from a country who has so many crises that we're having to, to export our pain. And because we have so many crises going on in America just now. I say that because I have taught this that I want to say to you that the greatest power that is in the world is the power to believe. It is the greatest power in the world is the power to believe. God has a desire to be believed. God does not have a desire to be understood. God does not have a desire to be figured out. God does not have a desire to be forensically studied like a science fair chemistry project. God has a desire which is to be believed. And God is so good that he can work with anyone, but he works especially with those who believe. To such a degree that the Bible tells us that all things are possible. Finish it for me. To those that believe, everybody say all things are possible. To those who believe. What you believe and the power to believe is the greatest power there is in the world today. 
We don't always understand that because our belief systems are affected by so many things. Our belief systems are affected by, by what entertainment promotes to us. The other year I was sitting at a table with a famous rapper who is also in films and in movies, but also is known quite amongst the young people as a very famous rapper. And just a few of us were sitting at a table and it happened to be my birthday, so we were all kind of there and I know people in the Hollywood world and so this person knew, anyway, we were sitting there talking. And um, I said to this person, I'm not gonna give you their name because I don't wanna create a situation. I said to this, this young rapper, I said, tell me, what does success look like to you? And he says, I'm successful. He says, I have my mansion in Beverly Hills. And I have my Bentley now. And, I, and my children are in private schools. I am successful. And you know God made me an apostle. You know that, right? So I, so I have this thing about where I have to say something. So I said, well, good for you. And I started clapping for him. I said, because somebody needs to tell you something that the, the messages that you're putting out over the airwaves causes people not to be able to live in mansions, not to be able to drive Bentleys, and kids not to get to go to private schools. I said, because in my world, you are what we call a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Because you pretend to be a gangster but you live in a mansion in Beverly Hills. And then you drive to a studio and change clothes and put on gangster clothes. And then you use fake guns and fake bullets and fake blood and make videos like you're a gangster. Then you get in your Bentley and drive back to your mansion in Beverly Hills. And then it causes our kids to use real guns and real bullets and real bloods. You are a hypocrite. I just had a real bad case that I had, somebody should say something about that. I just thought somebody should say something about that. What do you think? And I realized that, uh, that, that the, the mentality of what people believe is being affected. I told him, I said, I'm not your enemy. I said, I care enough about you to tell you the truth that you should never use the gifts that God gave you and the influence that God gave you to promote messages that harm other people. It's time for you to stand up and be a man and help a generation rather than making money off of their pain. Somebody ought to clap and help a preacher out right here. I don't know if I'm going to have any friends when I leave here today, but I'm going to preach what I have to preach. I'm going to say what needs to be said because the problem is we keep rewarding people for harming our next generation. And now we have a generation of young people rising up who are sad, who are confused, who are, are disillusioned because the world seems like it's on fire and nobody has taught them that what you believe is the most important thing in the world. It's not what you're driving, it's where you're going. It's not what you're wearing, it's, it's, it's what you believe and what can you do. And this is, this is the problem that we have in the world. And so we don't understand and, and people feel like the, the greatest power in the world. There are really three main powers that people focus on. And, and the, the first one is political power. Most people look to the political world for power. And it's not to say who sits in political offices don't matter. But political power is a power. It's a power. It's a power. Half of the world is going to be under elections this year. Half of the world is under elections this year. Political power. And so when we look to politicians and, 
and we should pray for those in authority, and we should p pray, but I have, I have been in interesting political circles. I was in Zimbabwe when the economy crashed, when Mugabe was there. I was staying at the Mikos Hotel when Mbeki came to meet with Mugabe, and they had to clear the hotel so they could have their peace accord. I know what it's like to work throughout South Africa and Jacob Zuma and all this going on with that. I don't even have to go out of my own country to, to see interesting politics. <laughs> the whole world is in political upheaval. And so we pray for those leaders, and I pray over Africa, and I pray for Ghana that God will always give you good and wonderful leaders that have your best interests at heart. We make those prayers. But politicians have a way of letting us down. Did you hear that there were no amens in here? Politicians have a way of letting us down because they, they master the art of saying a lot of words without saying anything, especially when we are in times of trouble, when we are times of crisis. And part of this, I say, because there are so many problems coming at them that they don't know what to do, and so then they just start saying things that if you dissect what they say, there's absolutely nothing been said. And they're good at it. That's why they are politicians. If you're a politician and you hear God bless you, and, and amen for you. I'm not a politician. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preacher, so I'm going to say what I want to say. And, and, and the problem, yes, come on, everybody clap. I'm working. I'm working hard. I'm going to work hard today. I'm going to work. And politicians are always getting to the bottom of things. And they say to us, yes. We're going to organize a committee to investigate and get to the bottom of things and start an initiative, and therefore we can make strategic plans so that we can move forward and develop a new initiative so that we can make sure that we can get the message out to the people. What did you just say? And they are always investigating, always progressing and moving forward and always creating some initiative and always getting some people together to investigate the situation so that we can get more information and we can strategically plan based on the information gathering committee that we are putting together so that they can infer and confer and adjudicate and miss it. But at some point we need you to do something. <laughs> political powers are political powers. We have political powers, and, and, and that, that creates a unique thing. And, but, but there are also then economic powers, economic powers. And so we, we live in a world where people think like everything, everything that is the greatest power, that money drives the world, and money drives the natural world for sure, and money is the root of all evil, and, and so now we have politicians who are trying to deal with an economic, global inflation issue, which is causing problems and unrest and dis-ease and disease and all of, the, all of the ills that come with lack. Now we have politicians trying to deal with a, with a global inflationary problem. And, of course, Ghana is not exempt from that. I think you know this. You know this because food prices have gone crazy. And the inflation upon food has gone up. If it's beef and vegetables, 28, 30%, water is up 40%. Everything is, everything is up, everything is up. And now, and now it, it, what, what you used to buy takes twice as much to buy the same thing to buy. And food prices are up, in part, because fertilizer is up. Fertilizer, the price of fertilizer is up 400%. And so now the farmers that are trying to farm, that need to use the fertilization, now have to pay 400 times as much for the fertilizer. So therefore, food prices go up because fertilizer goes up. Fertilizer goes up because the price of freight is up. 
because Ghana imports almost everything. And so you have to import something, which means that it has to come by freight. And freight is up. So now freight that is up causes the fertilizer to go up, which causes the food to go up. And everything goes up because the oil and petrol goes up. And now everybody is on public transport. And public transport has gone up 50%. And food has gone up 40%. And And now we're, we are trying to figure out, because young people are saying, well, how do I get started into the thing? How do I start a family? How do I start a business? And should we even talk about the interest rates? How do I get money? How do I start a business? How do I do this thing? How am I supposed to get going? I'm getting there. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. The third power is military might. You have political power, economic power, and you have military power in the world. In the country that I grew up in, developed the understanding of what they call the military-industrial complex. When Eisenhower, who was a military leader before he became the president, warned our country of what would eventually happen was when people found out there was money to be made off of keeping wars going. Millions, now trillions of dollars are made from the military industrial complex. And in the country I grew up in, it started off in the First World War. And the First World War, the great builders, which, which, which was Henry Ford and DuPont family, all of those people were enlisted by the government to rather than to use their factories to make paint or to make automobiles to turn them into and help us make bombers, ships, grenades. And guess what they found out? You can make as much money building bombs and grenades as you can building cars. You're very quiet today. And since that time, you have places like Boeing, Lockheed, all of those places that have trillions of dollars a year. I'm going to make a point after a bit. Just give me a minute. There are trillions of dollars that they make every year because there are wars going all over the world. And so if Russia invades Ukraine, then we, get, then we put enough weapons over there to keep the industrial military complex funded with trillions of dollars, but somehow we don't ever give them enough to win the war. We just give them enough to keep it going. You don't have to say amen. And then we see what goes on in the, in the Middle East, and we have some countries coming in, and so the threat of wars and rumors of wars causes China to put a bunch of money into their military industrial complex and causes Ukraine to ask for some and now Taiwan is scared and now everybody is rising up and now it's going because we have been convinced that political power, economic power and military power are the greatest powers that there are in the world. I want to remind you that there was a man named Adolf Hitler one time who said he was going to build a kingdom that would last 1,000 years. And he had the greatest military industrial complex. He had the greatest political power and he controlled all the money. He said his kingdom would last 1,000 years and he did not live another 1,000 days. Because I came to tell you here, my brothers and sisters, that kingdoms will rise and kingdoms will fall, but there will always be a name that is above every name. There will always be a name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. I said at the name of Jesus. Where are my Christians at in this building today? Where are my believers at in this building today? That still believe the power to believe is the greatest power. 
It is the greatest power in the world today. There will always be sadness and depression and anxiety, and the world we live in will look to make find a chemical problem to the situation so that they can find a chemical treatment for the situation, not knowing that the situation is not always chemical and doesn't need more drugs. What it needs is the soul to be reborn and to understand that Jesus came to deliver you from the sadness, the depression, the oppression, and the power of the enemy. I need a Holy Ghost Christian to say amen in this building today. We understand then the people, people begin to try to find it. We have a generation of young people now that are struggling, trying to find their bearings because everything becomes pharmaceuticals. Everything becomes a mental health issue. And the world has lost its hinges not understanding that the greatest power in the world is the power to believe. If you can believe, you can move mountains. I'm gonna try that over here on this side. If you believe, you can move mountains. That's, a, that's not any good either. Let me try over here. If you can believe, you can move mountains. That means that once I understand that what I believe is the greatest power that I have, then it, does, then it is not my main concern. Politics has its place, but it's not my number one concern. Economies have their place, but they are a byproduct of other things. Military might is not the greatest might in the world, but if we can believe, all things are possible. And it is true that some will trust in chariots and some will trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I just need you to just play strings and not be going up and down. We have to understand that it is not the place of natural powers to dictate the way that we live our life. Brothers and sisters, I'm here for a reason. Can you tell that? I'm here for a reason because I believe that we are in a strategic place at a strategic, ti strategic time. I believe that Africa has a crucial role in the development of the next generation. Africa has more people 19 and under than any other continent on the planet. It has an entire generation of young people that are coming up. Africa is the wealthiest nation, but what we're not paying attention to is that China actually owns 7% of all the land mass on the continent of Africa. You're not listening to me. We have to understand that it is what we believe. And if we come to church and think because somebody pours, pours oil on us that all of our problems are going to disappear, then we are wrong. If we come to church and think we can clap our way into a breakthrough, then we are wrong. If we come to church and think we can sing our way into a new job, we are wrong. We have to understand, we have to believe something. Because if we don't believe the right stuff, we're never going to get to the right place. I came to tell you that Action Chapel has always had and always is supposed to have a voice to the continent of Africa to say it is time for Africa to rise up and be who God made us to be. I need you to stand up and clap one time for one minute. Just stand up. I need somebody to shout, I hear you. If you're just happy that a preacher is up here, not trying to preach politically correct, but trying to give you the word of God, I want you one time just to say yes. All right, be seated, be seated, be seated, because I'm almost there. I'm almost there because it's important for us to understand because there's no philosophy that will fix it. I've read Nietzsche's stuff. I've read Marcus Aurelius' stuff. I know, I know what they say. I know that Darwin was out of his mind when he ended up at the Galapagos Island and wrote The Origin of Species and thought that somehow you could come from something else. We have philosophies that have demoralized the lives of our young people, and yet we come to church and we're not teaching them that what you believe is important. What you believe is important. And that at the name of Jesus, since it is a name that is above every name, I'm going to say it out loud. 
The name of Jesus is above every name. It is above every kingdom. It is above every politician. It is above every economy. It's above every bomb or military might. It is above every disease. If it has a name, it has a need. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. If you got a name for it, I got a knee for it. The name of Jesus is above. And so I believe that we have to realize that Jesus only came to build and promised to build one thing. He did not come to, to promise to build our nation. He did not come to promise to build your business. He did not come to promise to build the things that we put our attention in. He said, I will build. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Come on, Ghana, let me hear you. Jesus comes to a strategic place. I'm almost done now, really. Jesus came to a strategic place called Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea, named after Caesar. Caesar built a city to honor himself, a resort city. Caesarea Philippi, and they came there. Jesus asked them, these are the three questions that have to be answered. Watch me now. Not only who do men say that I am, here's the question. Who do you say? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Son of God, the living Christ. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. That's why you're blessed. Can I tell you, if you sit under the sound of my voice today, whether you're watching on television, whether you're watching on live stream, whether you're sitting in this building, whether you're hearing this in some other way, through your cell phone, through your computer, if you have the power to believe and you know that your belief did not come, just from the knowledge of man, but flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but God has put a revealed knowledge in your heart that Jesus is who he said he is, you should count yourself as blessed. Somebody shout, I'm a believer. Come on, shout, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Nobody talked me into it, so nobody's going to talk me out of it. I am a believer. Jesus said, watch this, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. And then Jesus says, and you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You have to understand the words that are used because our translations don't always help us. You are Peter. This is how this goes, everybody. When you realize who Jesus is, he's going to tell you who you are. When Simon said, you are the Son of God, the living Christ, Jesus said, yes, and you are Peter. The problem that we have is too many people trying to figure out who you are when you don't know who he is. And since he's the one who made you, you have to go to him to find out who you are. And when you don't know who you are, you have to believe what other people tell you. That's what I'm trying to preach to you today. When you don't know who you are, you have to believe what politicians tell you you're capable of. When you don't know who you are, you think that the economy governs the level of prosperity in your life. When you don't know who you are, you think military might is the greatest power that there is in the world today. But when you know who you are, you know that the gates of hell cannot prevail against your purpose, your destiny, your generation. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. All of, the, all of the fathers in this building, stand up for just one minute. If you're a father in this house, stand up. If you don't know, then stay down. I just wanted to say amen for you today because everybody clap for all these fathers. Matter of fact, all the men, all the men stand up. If you're, a, you're not a father yet, but one day you will be, or you used to be, I don't know what. 
The reason I say that is because I want to say amen and God bless you because it means something that you're here. It means something that you're here because when you as a father of a house, a father of children, make Jesus the Lord over your life and find out who you are, that is a, a decision that is more important than paying for somebody's tuition. It's more important than starting a business. It's more important than running for political office. It's making Jesus the Lord over your life and being able to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Everybody clap. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm going to preach like I feel it now because you got pretty quiet when I said that was more important than paying for your kid's tuition. Because what you believe is important, and we actually believe that you're a good dad if you pay for somebody's tuition, but you're not a good dad if you're not leading your kids to Christ and you're not there and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It takes more than basketballs and tennis shoes and tuition. Thank you very much. I'm just, I'm just clapping for myself because I'm not getting any help. I'm going to go clap for myself. We actually have people sitting under the sound of my voice that would rather for your children to marry a doctor or a lawyer or somebody who has money than somebody who is a Christian. You don't care whether they believe in God or not as long as they have a couple cars and a nice house and they're going to school. But, but have you ever asked them, are they saved? Do they serve Jesus? See how quiet. You know why? Because you come to church and you sing, but your belief is still moved because you still believe political power, economic power, military power is the greatest power that's in the world today. But money will fail you. Doctors will fail you. Lawyers will fail you. Kingdoms will fail you. Politicians will fail you. I need somebody to testify right here that Jesus will never fail. Years ago, I was preaching in our church, and there was a young man in our church. He was a teenager, and his name was Plaz, P-L-A-Z. I'd never met anyone before or after whose name was Plaz. And Plaz had two large hearing aids because he was born to where he couldn't hear well at all. And without the hearing aids, he was he was almost totally deaf. And I was praying for people around our church. And I went up to pray for Plaz, and something rose up in me where I believed, where I believed. And I reached out and put my hands on him, and I said, in the name that is above every name. And I reached up and grabbed him and prayed for him. And Plaz took his hearing aids out. And Plaz goes, I can hear. I can hear. And the whole church was, was just going crazy. And the thing that was interesting, that was because Plaz couldn't hear well, he also didn't know how to speak well. And Plaz was an awkward teenager, and you know, the kids weren't kind to him, and, and he, was, he was kind of uh, not socialized well with the other kids. That Sunday night, we, we had service, and I was coming into the building, and I saw walking away from me that way was Plaz just walking. I was, face, I was coming up on his back. And so I thought, like, I want to test this out and find out if he really got a miracle. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to know, did you really get a miracle? And so as he was walking away from me, and he didn't know I was behind him, in a small voice, I said, Class, can you hear me? And he was all the way over here, like this. And Plas turned around. He goes, I can hear you, Bishop. I can hear you. <laughs> the 
But it not only affected his hearing, but guess what happened? Plaz became confident. Plaz started figuring out who he was. Plaz changed his name to Andrew Jackson, the president. Plaz said he legally changed his name to President Andrew Jackson. He became so confident that he began to speak to the teenagers. Rather than being the outcast, he became the kid everybody wanted to be around. And the next thing you know, Plaid was leading meetings in my youth group to help bring revival to the young people. Why? When you find out who he is, he's going to let you know who you can be. And every so often there come diseases and there come plagues and there come things. And the same people that want their children to marry a doctor, whether they're saved or not, or an attorney, whether they're saved or not, or an entertainer, whether they're saved or not, as long as they are rich, as long as they are rich. And when that is your belief system, then your God is mammon. And when your God is mammon, you have to find out that mammon begins to take your economy from you and your, and your food goes higher and your gas goes higher because part of the curse is managing the curse. Oh my God. God, I'm going to preach something in here today. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. And if you serve God, he will bless you. But if you turn your mind towards politi political power, economic power, and military power, then you have to manage the curse all by yourself. All right, I'm, going to, I'm running out of time. I think someone, Bishop, I think someone has speeded up the clock because they want me to sit down and quit now. But I'm going to do five more minutes. Is that all right? Can I have five more minutes? Can I have five more minutes? I'm going to tell you about five more minutes because what Jesus said to them was this. It's the proper use of the words in Greek. You are Peter. Peter is the word Petros. Petros is Peter. And that means small rock. You are a small rock, Peter. But upon this rock, the word for rock in Greek is Petra, P-E-T-R-A. Petros, Petra. He's making a distinction between Peter and the rock. Peter had a revelation, but the revelation is the rock. I think you missed that. Petrus, upon, you are, you are a rock, but upon this Petra, boulder, upon this revelation, I will build my church. The word church is, a, is an interesting translation because the word church is E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A, ecclesia. You are, okay, let me paraphrase, you are a small stone set in order on this big revelation that I'm going to build my ecclesia. It's the three questions that have to be answered. Who is he? Who am I and what can we do together? The ecclesia is a, is a term, if you go through Aristotle and Plato and th those, those three, and Socrates, those three guys, they're the ones that developed that, that political system. And the word that they had was ecclesia. An ecclesia, a king chooses his ecclesia. The ecclesia does not choose its king. The ecclesia does not counsel the king. The king gives instructions to the ecclesia. Jesus said, listen to each one of you. You are a living stone set in order in the house of God, but you are standing on a big revelation 
that Jesus is who he said he is. And if you become a part of that community, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. One more time, somebody clap your hands. I believe part of the frustration with many Christians is that they're trying to claim blessings that belong to the entire body to themselves individually. And you think that you could be disconnected from the church and disconnected from the body and read your Bible by yourself or watch your friend online or go to your uncle's church with three people sitting in their living room and somehow you can claim the same blessing as those who are part of the church. But Jesus said, I came to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And when you're part of the church, then collectively we have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You don't get to bind and loose by yourself. Is this too strong for a Sunday morning? I'll finish it on Wednesday. Binding and loosening. The ecclesia was a part, was a part of full citizens of Rome. Full citizens. The Roman Empire covered a lot of ground, but the ecclesia were full citizens. When they gathered to make the laws, that was only for the ecclesia. And the ecclesia got to determine what was legal and what was illegal in Rome. The church is the ecclesia. There's a lot of people that are saved that are not part of the church. That was quiet. There are a lot of people that fell away during tough times. But we who are the church are the ones that have the power to determine what is legal and what is not legal. We are the ones that have the keys to bind and to loose. Everyone running around trying to bind something and loose something does not have the power to do it because they are not a part of the community of faith that Jesus said, I give unto you. He didn't give you the keys individually. He gave the keys to the ecclesia and said the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. So when your economy is acting up, you have the power to do something about it. When the enemy is acting up, what military might can't do, what doctors can't do, what politicians can't do, he said, I have put something in my church that you can do what nobody else can do because the greatest power in the world is the power to believe. I, I got to tell you one story. I was, a, I was a young pastor. I was a young pastor. I was a youth pastor. Can you imagine how much of a problem I was? As a youth pastor, I was a problem as a youth pastor because my goal was to outgrow the main church, you know, because I've always been kind of that way. And so, but I was having, I don't know if this is a, a phrase you might be familiar with. I was having, as, a, as an 18-year-old, I was having what I called a cash crunch. A cash crunch, that means I didn't have any money. I was running out of money. But I had this thing on me that I wouldn't let anybody know. So people would say, how you doing? I said, I'm blessed. I'm doing all right. Because I decided I would not be a beggar. And I would not ask people that I was just going to let God take care of it. And I made sure that every week at the Pentecostal Holiness Church where I was their youth pastor, every week I put my tithe in the offering. And I knew that if I had seed in that ground, that God was my source. But I didn't say anything to anybody, but I was running out of time to come up with a little bit of money that I needed. And I was preaching one Sunday, and I was sitting in the pastor's office, and the people that was counting the offering, came walking in, and they said, um, someone 
put a, a gift in here for Pitts. And it says, this is just a little special gift for Pitts. It was a check. And I said, hey amen, bring it to me. My name is Pitts, not your name. And he brought it to me. And I'm still sitting there talking to the pastor. And a few minutes later, the man walks back in. He says, somebody else put another check in here for Pitts. I said, hey amen, go and count some more. Keep counting. And so I don't know what happened, but something was coming in. I was getting ready to leave the church, and there was this gentleman who I called Tex. Tex. Because Tex was a cowboy. Like something in the movies. He had, his legs were like this, and cowboy boots, and a cowboy hat. And he walked like this. And Tex came walking up on me. And Tex reached in his pocket and he says, I have something for you. I want to know if I'm allowed to give it to you. I said, yes, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and he put, I could tell he put some money in my hand. And you know, sometimes people can put enough money in your hand that you could tell it's like some. There's some money there. But I didn't want to look at it while he's standing there. So I said, amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And I walked away very humbly. And I couldn't wait to get to the back and see what he gave me. And by the time it was all over, by the time it was all over, every need I had was met. I know it only sounds like a little story. It was a little thing to a young 18-year-old. But it was, a, it was God putting the seed into my mind that economic power does not rest in other people's opinions of me. Economic power does not rest in what governments do. Economic power, if God is my source and I remember the Lord my God, it is he who gives me the power to get wealth. But I will not allow mammon to become my God because Jesus has a name that is above every name. One more time today, clap your hands, everybody. <laughs> Jesus said to them, whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. I believe that when the church understands the ecclesia and the community of believers, we are those who believe. And the keys that, that he has given us, that all of the problems of the world actually can be solved. That if we would all come together and the churches would come together, we wouldn't have to have hungry people in Ghana. We wouldn't have to have young people that couldn't have startup businesses in Ghana. We wouldn't have to have illiteracy and poor water and all of those things, but we keep looking to other powers to do it when Jesus said, I'm going to give you some power. There is a, I say to you, there is a generation globally that's rising up that will be mountain movers, land possessors, demon chasers. Where are my Holy Ghost people at right here? And the first step, of course, is to realize Jesus is Lord over our life. I'm, I'm quitting here because I'm going to finish this, if I can, on Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, I'm going to finish it because we have to break ourselves from this rugged individualism where everything revolves around us. And we start claiming blessings that belong to the body of Christ as that's my blessing when it's really our blessing. That Jesus gave me keys when he really gave us keys. That Jesus said, I will send rain unto your land in its season, not rain to your yard. That Jesus, that you by yourself are not an army, you are a soldier. That you by yourself are not the family of God, you are a member. That you by yourself are not the kingdom of God, you are a citizen. 
that you by yourself are not a household of faith. You are a, a, whole, a living stone set in order in the house of God. I, I can't get any amens right now, but I'm going to preach like I want to. If we can recapture our community, if we can recapture our faith, if we can recapture our keys. Some, uh, can you bring me your keys? You are blessed. He is always so happy. Bless you. So, these are car keys. Yeah? It has, it has a Lexus logo on it. A, ooh, ooh. a Lexus logo. This young man here in the, in the right here, uh, with the, right here. Yes, you raise your hand. Come, 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 come quickly now, please, 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 please. Can you see how nervous he's getting? So if I were, come. If I were to give you those keys, you can go sit now. Yeah, just. Now watch how he's very nervous. He's not nervous. He's very happy. He's very nervous. <laughs> watch, watch. Can you see how, he, that, that's a scared laugh. He's like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We just need to make sure he doesn't leave the building right now. Okay. <laughs> so those keys are to Bishop's car, Lexus car. Watch me now. If this young man exits this building and goes find the Lexus, you know, bleep, 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 till he turn the alarm on, Till you find it. If he finds that Lexus, I'm not giving you ideas. I'm not giving you ideas. <laughs> if he finds the car, watch me. The car responds to the keys. I'm going to try it another way because I think you missed that. The car will not respond to ownership. The car responds to whoever has the keys. No, you still didn't get it. The car does not respond to the goodness or the badness of who has the keys. The car responds to who has the keys. A drug dealer could get those keys and do evil with the same thing. And the car will respond to him just like he was bishop. Because the car does not respond to ownership. The car does not respond to goodness or badness. The car does not respond to intent. What you intend to do. It does not respond to vision. Good people or bad people can have access to things because we as a people have not reclaimed our keys. And we don't reclaim our keys, the things of the Spirit respond to the keys. Not to ownership, not to goodness, not to badness. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus got up from the grave, he said, behold, I am he who is dead, and I'm now alive, and I have the keys of death, 
of hell and the grave. So I say to you, why don't we get our keys back and realize that the authority belongs to us? Come on, bring the keys, my brother. Bring the keys. Come on, everybody stand up and clap your hands. Come on, stand up and clap your hands. You are holy, holy. This rhythm. Are you Lord God Almighty? This rhythm, worthy is the Lamb. Come on. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You. Come on. This rhythm. Three, two, three. Four. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the land. Two, three. Worthy is the land. You are holy. You are holy. So holy as you are. Holy. Are you Lord God? Are you Lord God? Worthy is the land. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Come on, everybody. You are holy. Come on. Okay, hang on, hang on. You guys have to let me lead the song so I can set the rhythm, and I'll let you know when we're done. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have the keys. You are holy. Come on. And holy. Are you Lord God? Are you Lord God? Oh my. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You are Why you keep stopping? You are holy. Come on, God. this building under the sound of my voice. The Spirit of God is talking to men, to women, to young people. I think we might have a next-gen service going on next door, but everybody's not over there because many of you are as old as me and you still say you're next-gen. The thing about life is when you don't know who you are, you have to believe what somebody else tells you. Whew. I came here today as your brother. I came here today because you've always let me be your family. I came here today 
not because I am a son of the soil, but because I'm a son of the spirit. And and I have a strong, strong feeling that Africa has a great role in the future of the world and that Ghana has a great role in the future of Africa and that Action Chapel has a great voice to Ghana and to Africa and beyond. And therefore, I had to risk a little bit today just because I want to call you in to your maturity to understand why we are here. And we are not here just to be happy. We're not here just to do our thing. We are here because we have a role to play. Like Simon Peter, we're a rock on the rock. We are people that have a revelation. And I'm calling you as my brothers and sisters to remember our commitment to community, to being together, to loving one another, to caring for one another, to serving God together, to binding and loosening together. That's why I came here on this morning. I'll finish it on, on Wednesday and all of those things. But under the sound of my voice, watch this now. This is going to be amazing. There are people, some who are young, some who are more advanced, some who are, are in the height of life, some who are trying to figure out where life is at. But the biggest question to answer is who do you say that he is? And today, under the sound of my voice, there are people that say, today is the day that I am going to make Jesus Christ for real, the Lord over my life. And I will be who he said I can be. And no political power, no economic power, no military power, no entertainer can change what Jesus said about me. I want to know how many of you believe what I just said right there out loud. Can you just say amen? amen. And you're in this building today and you say, Bishop, when you pray that prayer, pray with me and for me because today is my day. You may have been in church a hundred times. It may be your first time. It doesn't matter to me. And you say, today is the day that I'm making Jesus Lord over my life. I will not let money rule me. I will not let my own desires rule me. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Today. Everybody shout today. today. You're too quiet. It's not a funeral. Say today. today. And today is going to be your day. And you say, when you pray that prayer, pray with me and for me because I'm one of those people. I want you to stick your hand up in the air right now. If you're someone that today you're giving your life to Jesus and you heard what I preached today and you realize, God bless you. There are hands going up all over this building. All right. Now listen. Our bishop is coming here in just a minute. He's going to give us our, the rest of our instructions. But I want to say to you that every power working against you must be bound. And I declare over you that you are who God said you are. You can do what God said you can do. That just because others have not done it doesn't mean you can't do it. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't do it. And I declare that may Ghana be blessed. May the continent of Africa be blessed. May the city of Accra be blessed. May every person under the sound of my voice rise up and embarrass your enemies with how great God blesses you. And I declare over you that great days of victory be upon you. And may we see global turnarounds all over the world. And may a generation be saved because there is a name above every name. And everybody says amen, amen. Come on, clap your hands, everybody.
you put your hands together and give the Lord praise for His faithfulness, for His mercy that are new every morning. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for the life of Bishop Michael Pitts for an awesome, awesome word. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those of us who lifted our hands, who wanted to give our life to Jesus Christ today, it's a very important decision you've made today. We want to give you the support you need. If you can, shall we please remain standing, please? You've been sitting for a long time. Please remain standing with us just for a moment. If you lifted your hand, can you quickly come forward? Please come forward. Please come forward. You lifted up your hands. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You want to acknowledge him today. You declared that earlier indicated by lifting your hand. You prayed with him. Can you please come? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There's nothing to be shy of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Please come. Please come. You want to make peace with God. You don't want to miss this opportunity. You don't want to miss this opportunity for any reason whatsoever. Hallelujah. We thank God for your lives. We have some brethren coming from the third level. We will put them out of respect for them. Please put your hands together for them as they come. Hallelujah. Congratulations for taking this step of faith. The servant of God has already prayed for you. We pray that God will establish you and he will help you to grow in him. That you will see the full benefits of the decision you've taken today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you kindly turn around, I have a brother behind you in the ghost seat. Please go with him. He has some information for you, then you'll come back. Put your hands together for them. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You want to respond to the word you heard in the moment. You want to pray that God, let your will for my life be established. You came to give unto the church keys. Keys to open and to shut. You have a plan for my life. I declare that the economy will not rule my life. Political power will not rule over me. Money will not give me instructions. No human being will give me direction. I will take my instructions from the Lord. And God, through whoever he chooses, will guide me. But my guidance and my direction will come from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here who wants to pray for the manifestation of God's will in your life? Anybody here? Say, oh Lord. Let your will, let your purpose for my life come into manifestation. Show me who I am and guide me into what I must do and to where I must be. In the name of Jesus. Say anything designed to confuse me, to misdirect me, to misguide me. By the power of the name of Jesus, I override it. I command it out of my way. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Command a manifestation of the goodwill of God, the plans of God, the purpose of God for your life and manifestation of God's plan for your family, for your children, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice if you can and command the manifestation. Oh, I can't hear you at all. There are many things hoping to misdirect you, but today override them, silence them, that the will of God shall be the guiding principle in your life that the hand of the Lord shall be, oh God, but I shall be the direction and the director and the instructor in your life. Put your hands together and pray. For a moment, just pray. God, guide me. God, lead me. God, instruct me. Make my way perfect. Show me what to do. Show me where to do. I pray your guidance over the lives of my children. In the name of Jesus, show them who they are and show them 
what they must do and where they must go in the name of Jesus. May we not be misguided, but may we be children instructed and guided by the principles of God's word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for tithe. You may be seated. It's time for tithe and offerings. An opportunity for us to honor this great and mighty God who has made our lives what it is today and who has greater plans for our lives. Amen. Remember Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. He said all the tithe of the land, whether it's the seed of the field or the fruit of your, whatever it is, God said all the seed and the and all the tithe of the land is mine. He said it's mine. He said when you take from it, then you must redeem it. 31, 32, and you redeem it by adding 20%. That is what God says. So tell somebody, please don't borrow your tithe. Oh, tell somebody for free, please don't borrow your tithe. Amen. Because the tithe belongs to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And here, men who die receive the tithe, but he who lives forever is the one who keeps the tithe records. Please come forward with your tithe and lift up an offering unto the Lord. The Bible says, Sea time and harvest will never cease while this earth remains. So your seed will determine your harvest. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. Change your seed to guarantee the type of harvest you require. Because your seed will determine your harvest. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. Lift it up. Begin to pray over your tithe, pray over your offering. If you want to give electronically, whether you are in-house or online, the details are on your screen. If you're giving via any of the networks using your phone, you can use your, lift up your phone also as a point of contact as we pray. We want to invite the Bishop David King to pray over our tithe and our offerings. Shall we please stand? Please lift up your tithe. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, to those who believe all things are possible. All things are possible, including the opening of the windows of heaven. All things are possible, including the rebuke of the devourer. All things are possible concerning the increase that you have in store for your people. Therefore, Father, today let your word take effect. Let the effect of your word be felt in the earth. Let nothing come against the harvest of your people and prevail. We decree and declare that the devourer will not succeed against you. Even as you plant your tithe, let the Lord open new avenues of revenue unto you. We declare that increase will come unto you without hard labor. Because you have honored the Lord and because you believe, let your faith and this act stating that you believe be the key that opens the door of this prosperity to you. Let your increase come without delay. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please plant your tithe. Take up your offering. Please lift it up unto the Lord. Father, to those who give, you said that our measure is pressed down, shaken together, running over, coming from the bosom of man. Therefore, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as offerings and vows are given, as seeds are sown to the God who ensures that as surely as heaven and earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never fail. Let your word that is written that no man can change, let it go into effect. Let increase come without delay. Let heaven water our seed, cause it to bud and bring forth fruit that will remain. And let your house also be blessed as your people are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please come with your seed and your offerings. God be the glory. Amen. 
morning we have in the house uh, Mr. Arthur and his family. If you remember last year we laid to rest our precious sister Mrs. Sabina Arthur. It's one year already and the family is here to say thank you to the Lord for keeping them. Can I have the family please come forward? Mr. Arthur and the family if they can quickly come forward. Can I have the clergy please join us? They have a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord for keeping them one year.
Fortify your spiritual arsenal and increase your faith with Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams' latest books, Enforcing Prophetic Decrees, Volume 2. Don't Fight the Process, The Snare of Indifference, Lukewarmness, Understanding the Prophetic, Biblical Insights into the Prophetic Ministry, Beyond the Valley, Mastering the Test of Faith, Love, and Character. Get your copies today while quantities last. Copies are available at the large orange kiosks. And the foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be His servants, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted at my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Many years ago, the Lord spoke to his servant, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, to build a house of prayer for all nations and generations. When I came here the last train, I made a vow. Because I stood on the mountain there and I believe I heard the voice of the Lord and He said, Build me a prayer mountain in God. And when immediately I went back, I started looking around. And somebody in the church said, yeah, I have a mountain for you to look at. And when I saw it, the Lord said, This is the mountain. The same blessing of God that rests upon this land will be impacted to us, to our people, and to our land. The Global Prayer Command Center, also called the Prayer Mountain, is located in Brokusu, Ghana and will feature a wailing wall, an amphitheater, dormitories, a donor wall and a cathedral. People from all over the globe will gather to seek the face of the Lord, fast and pray around the clock and together we would raise a mountain of prayer from the shores of Africa. From this generation to the next and the generations yet unborn, the Global Prayer Command Center will be a place of refuge for all Christians and we must not be left out. No matter how big or small, we all have a role to play. There is room for your support. If you're located in Accra, you may stop by the Global Prayer Command Center info table located in the various lobbies at Action Chapel on the Spinctus Road, or you can visit linktr.ee forward slash action ch and click on Global Prayer Command Center to see how you can get involved today. Now is the time. This is the moment. Be part of the Global Prayer Command Center today. God bless you. It's okay for me to say to you that before we leave this place today, we're going to bind up some things and we're going to lose some things in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. I think everyone knows nearly everywhere in the world today that you and I are at pivotal moments in the history of the world. It seems like the whole world is on fire. It seems like every part of the world that you look into is facing crisis. Jesus told us, of course, that troublesome times would come upon the earth, but that we should not be alarmed. The Bible teaches us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, so that which cannot be shaken shall remain. I hope it's okay for me today to take you into this road so that you understand that what we do is important during important times.
it's in, it's, these are important times because I see that our, we have a generation of young people that are rising up that are inflicted with sadness and confusion. People all over the world feel uncertain about their future. What are we doing? How are we doing it? Where are we going? And it seems to me like the whole world has lost their mind. Every place you look, it seems that there is trouble. If we look into the Middle East, we see there is trouble. If we look into Russia and Ukraine, we see trouble. If we look into parts of Africa, we see trouble. If we see places like the UK and we see places like America, it seems like we see so much trouble. Trouble is on every hand. And the question then becomes, what are we going to do about these things? Since I was a young man, God has, for his purposes, allowed me to see major cities in the world and allowed me to preach to these cities because God has a plan for cities and nations. And the purpose of the enemy is to come in and weaken nations and to weaken cities, and then to weaken families, and to weaken the people. And in seeing all of these nations and major cities, I begin to realize that there is something special that God has in mind for every city and every nation and every place. We find out that some put their trust in politicians and some are putting their trust in a global economy and some are putting their trust in military might. The Bible said some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will put our trust in the name of the Lord our God. I did not come here as a politician today, I promise you. I did not come here to give some political speech. I came because I came here today to tell you and to remind you that we are standing in this place, which is a strategic place, because in this place, a voice goes out to all of Africa. From this place, people hear words from God. I was watching Dominion Television the other day and realizing that through 48 different countries throughout Africa, what I'm saying here this morning will be rebroadcast this evening and it goes throughout the nations of Africa because Papa stood here years ago and had a vision that what happens in this place will have ripple effects throughout the continents of Africa and then through, throughout the continent of Africa, the countries of Africa, and then throughout the world. Somebody clap your hands. We are not here today just because it's a Sunday and we came for our own personal blessing. We are not here today just because we don't have anything to do. We are here because we are on an assignment at a critical time, at a critical place, at a critical juncture. And what we do in these days will make a difference for many years to come. And I came here as your brother to say we are about ready to take the keys back out of the hands of the devil and let him know it's time for us who have the keys of the kingdom to bind and to loose on earth and it will be bound and loosed in heaven. Come on one more time. Clap your hands, everybody. It is these strategic moments. I remember watching how keys begin to work. When I was a young man, I was in India. I was in India with Dr. Lester Summerall. Dr. Lester Summerall was as a father to me in the faith. And I so revered him. And we were in India, and there was thousands and thousands of people filling the fields at the meetings that we were holding. And Dr. Lester Sumrall was sitting here on the platform. I'm sitting here. And the pastor that was organizing the meetings was sitting here. I was a very young man, 29, maybe. And the 
the pastor leaned across me to say to Dr. Summerall, don't receive any offering in this meeting. Dr. Summerall looked back at the pastor and said, you must teach the people to give. The pastor leans back. I'm in the middle. I'm hearing. I'm trying to stay out of it. And the pastor, the pastor says, the people have nothing to give. Dr. Summerall said, let those that have something to give, give. There is a power that is greater than military power because there is a kingdom that is not of this world that Jesus came to establish. And I believe that it is time for the kingdom of God to rise because we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And the world may be shaking around us, but you shall not be shaken. I said, you shall not be shaken. Everybody stand up one time. Say it out of your mouth. I will not be shaken. Come on, Action Chapel. Say it. I will not be shaken. Clap your hands one time and say, I will not be shaken. seems like it's on fire it seems like the world has lost its bearings like the world has lost its mind I don't know if you have noticed it but it's wherever you look it seems like the world is in crisis the world it seems like it's in crisis if you look into the Middle East then you see that the world is in crisis if we look to to Russia and Ukraine, we see that that part of the world is in crisis. Beginning with the Arab Spring just a few years ago, set another part of Europe into crisis. I come from a country who has so many crises that we're having to, to export our pain. And because we have so many crises going on in America just now, I say that because I have taught this that I want to say to you that the greatest power that is in the world is the power to believe. It is the greatest power in the world is the power to believe. God has a desire to be believed. God does not have a desire to be understood. And now we have a generation of young people rising up who are sad who are confused, who are, are disillusioned because the world seems like it's on fire and nobody has taught them that what you believe is the most important thing in the world. It's not what you're driving, it's where you're going. It's not what you're wearing, it's, it's, it's what you believe and what can you do. And this is, this is the problem that we have in the world and so we don't understand and, and people feel like the, the greatest power in the world there are really three main powers that people focus on and, and the, the first one is political power most people look to the political world for power and it's not to say who sits in political offices don't matter but political power is a power it's a power it's a power half of the world is going to be under elections this year of the 
world is under elections this year. Political power. And so when we look to politicians and and we should pray for those in authority and we should pray, but I have, I have been in interesting political circles. I was in Zimbabwe when the economy crashed, when Mugabe was there. I was staying at the Migos Hotel when Mbeki came to meet with Mugabe and they had to clear the hotel so they could have their peace accord. I know what it's like to work throughout South Africa and Jacob Zuma and all this going on with that. I don't even have to go out of my own country to, to see interesting politics. <laughs> the whole world is in political upheaval. And so we pray for those leaders and I pray over Africa and I pray for Ghana that God will always give you good and wonderful leaders that have your best interests at heart. Politics has its place, but it's not my number one concern. Economies have their place, but they are a byproduct of other things. Military might is not the greatest might in the world, but if we can believe, all things are possible. And it is true that some will trust in chariots and some will trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I just need you to just play strings and not be going up and down. We have to understand that it is not the place of natural powers to dictate the way that we live our life. Brothers and sisters, I'm here for a reason. Can you tell that? I'm here for a reason because I believe that we are in a strategic place at a strategic time. Strategic time. I believe that Africa has a crucial role in the development of the next generation. Africa has more people 19 and under than any other continent on the planet. It has an entire generation of young people that are coming up. Africa is the wealthiest nation. But what we're not paying attention to is that China actually owns 7% of all the land mass on the continent of Africa. You're not listening to me. We have to understand that it is what we believe. And if we come to church and think because somebody pours, pours oil on us that all of our problems are going to disappear, then we are wrong. If we come to church and think we can...